Welcome to Possible Effect. My name is Prajwal. And I'm Jacob. And today we're going to teach you three visual color changes that you can use in a variety of ways. Now, as many of you may know, a color change is where you take one card and you change it into another. And with that said, let's jump right in. The Erdenace color change was originally published in Expert at the Card Table in 1902 under the name Two-Handed Transformations First Method. Now, since then, it's become known simply as the Erdenace change, for obvious reasons, although Roberto Giobi also included it in his Card College series, calling it the Houdini change. Now, this is one of the most popular color changes out there, but there are still several really important techniques and subtleties that we often see missed when this change is performed or taught. So let's take a look at it step by step together and see how to do a really clean Erdenace change. Okay, so the basic concept of the Erdenace change is that the top card is gonna get pushed forward, the second card is pulled back until it clears, and then pushed forward on top, while the original card is pulled square with the deck, so the two cards essentially just trade places. Now, of course, this is mostly done by the free hand, which pushes the top card, then contacts the second card, pulls it back, and pushes it back on top. But before you go trying this out, let's break the change down into three specific phases that are gonna help you practice. The push, the pull, and the reveal. To push the top card up, the most important place to start is your hand positioning. So with the deck in a standard mechanics grip, place your free hand such that it completely covers the top card as you push it forward. So a really common mistake here is to place your hand such that the card is still visible when it's pushed forward. But that means the spectator can not only see it move forward, they can also see it move back into the deck at the end, which are both dead giveaways that at least something fishy is going on. Now you do not want to let the deck stay covered for very long because you really want to avoid this image sticking in the spectator's mind. And a little bit of movement in your fingers can help decrease that amount of time. So rather than starting out with a completely flat hand that you slap on the deck and use to push that top card forward, you can kind of come over the top of the deck with your fingers a little bit more relaxed and then use them to contact the front edge of the top card and gently extend your fingers forward to push it just the amount it needs to go. So if I just were to use my index finger to demonstrate that, comes over the edge, pushes forward, and you might be able to see that move just the amount you need to get that card out. Or sometimes as I'm bringing my free hand over the deck, I actually use the tip of my pinky as I close my hands almost like a book and I use it to contact the card a little bit early and then just extend as the pinky rolls. So without the other fingers, it would look like this just to give me that little amount I need. And how far do you need to actually push this top card out? Well, the gap will get smaller the more you practice, but it certainly doesn't need to be a full inch like we see sometimes. I generally find I need about a quarter of an inch for the most part, so that little strip back there. But if your free hand is positioned properly, you'll have some leeway to practice this because the top card can't be seen as you're pushing it forward. And once the top card is pushed forward, you're gonna use the palm of the free hand to contact that little strip back there of the second card that's exposed and pull it back. Now, where exactly that contacts on your palm will depend on the anatomy of your hands more than anything else. But your palm will learn to contact and pull that second card with a little bit of practice. And to actually get the card out, keep your hands nice and relaxed, obviously pull back as it contacts the palm, and apply a little bit of downward pressure as you do until it clears. And if you find that you hear a little bit of a click as the card clears, that probably means you're leaving too much of a gap between your free hand's fingers and the card that you're pulling out. And it also probably means that you're not trusting the fact that you have enough space in the back to let the card clear before tilting it and moving it to the top without falling off the back of the deck and you do have enough space there. So just be sure to trust the fact that you have the ledge that you can use so you don't get that little clicking. And if as you pull out this second card, you accidentally pull out part of the card below it, just practice adjusting the amount of force you're applying with the free hand so you don't catch that extra card. But also recognize that pulling out just a little bit of that extra card can actually form a small ledge that gives you some extra room for the card to clear 
before it now goes on top. So once you've pushed and pulled, you now have the reveal and the cleanup. So once the second card has cleared in the back, it can then be levered up by your free hand, pushed forward, and then revealed to be the new top card. Now, as that card comes forward, you wanna use the cover of the free hand's fingertips to pull the first card back flush with the deck with the index finger of the deck hand. So as that hand comes forward, you're gonna pull with this index finger under cover so that everything is square. So you can see how the less that card moves at the outset, the smoother this will all be. And there are several ways you can reveal the change as it's completed. So in order to make everything a little bit more visual, I like to make this small wiping motion with my hand right as everything lines up kind of for effect and to minimize the time that the deck is covered. You can also open your free hand's fingers and wave in a circular motion as everything comes back together. And the third approach would be to keep your free hand more rigid and then move it off to the side before revealing that the original card is in fact gone. So there are lots of other nuances and subtleties that you can try out, but at speed, the change would look something like this. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the paintbrush change. The paintbrush change was originated with Frank Cloyes in 1910. He used a gimmick, but two years later, Stanley Collins published an ungimmicked version. The version that we're all familiar with, the one we're about to learn right now, was published in 1913 by Frank Holmes. Let's take a look and see how it works. To begin the paintbrush change, go ahead and execute a double lift. You can use whichever double lift you'd like, just make sure you actually have two cards there. Now, we're gonna wanna hold the deck away from the actual double to begin, and there are actually two ways we can grip this double. The first way is holding it in the center, and the second way is holding it down here by the pip. Now, you can do whichever one comes naturally to you. The change is gonna work basically the same way with either grip, and you can learn the other one afterward. Now, I'm gonna begin by holding it in the center, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the double back to the deck and we're gonna mimic the action of just putting it back on. But that's not what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do instead is as the left edge of the double touches the right edge of the deck, like this, we're gonna split this double. Now, this is an exaggerated split and this is gonna look pretty bad in slow motion, but I promise it'll look a lot better at speed. As the edges touch, we split the double and we're gonna only drop this bottom card of the double and drag the top card over the deck and flick it off the thumb. Now, again, the change works the same way if we're doing it with the bottom, the pip grip. We're gonna have the edges touch, immediately split the cards, drop the bottom card, drag the top card over, and then flick off the thumb. Now, you might run into an issue when you do it with this bottom grip that when you drop this card, it doesn't quite land square with the deck. That's totally fine, just squeeze the deck with your left hand as you drag this card over in order to square the deck up before you do this flick. Now, at speed, the change looks something like this. Okay, so what most of us know is the Cardini change originated in 1906 with Reginald Morell and Frederick Lloyd. In August of 1909, J.E. Pierce published The Modern Mechanics, but it wasn't until a few months later that Lionel T. Scott started using it as a color change. Now, there's a lot of history behind this change, and it might require a little extra practice, but honestly, it is well worth it. So let's get into exactly how it works. All right, so in order to get in position for the Cardini change, you're gonna push the deck slightly forward from a standard mechanics grip and hold it firmly between the thumb and the index finger of the deck hand. Now, whether you hold it a little bit deeper in the hand or you hold it out toward the fingertips is gonna depend honestly on what's most comfortable for you in executing these next couple of steps. So from here, the pinky of the deck hand is going to contact the back corner of the top card and pull it off the face of the deck, just like that. Now, it really shouldn't come straight off the side because that's gonna make additional noise and might actually pull a second card with it, which we definitely don't want. Instead, you really want the pinky to be right on the corner back here and to gently pull diagonally so the card pivots ever so slightly and then just slides around the corner of the deck, basically. And of course, this is happening under cover 
of the free hand, which will generally make a waving motion to disguise what's happening to the card. And now the change itself is essentially done, but you're left dirty with this card in this position. So in order to clean up, the fingers of the deck hand are gonna continue pulling that card around to the bottom of the deck, while the free hand covers and holds the deck from the top. To avoid looking suspicious, you can either move directly into an all round square up as part of the cleanup, or you can spread and square the cards ever so slightly in order to cover the motion underneath of the deck hand's fingers. So at speed, it would look something like this. All right guys, that's it for this tutorial. And whether you're here learning these moves for the first time or just picking up a subtlety or two, we really hope you enjoyed it. And go ahead and drop a comment down below if you have any questions about these moves or if there are any variations of these changes that you use and like. And as always, thanks for sticking around.